Oh, let me, thank you, Lord. I love it when he does this to y'all and me too. Um, when you worship your tradition more than you worship Jesus, you shrink your spiritual capacity. Listen to me. I am a man who loves tradition. Can I tell you something? And y'all not get nervous? Traditions in and of themselves are not bad. You got Christmas tradition, Thanksgiving tradition. You got church tradition. I get a, I sung a song this morning I was raised singing as a boy, leaning on the everlasting hopes. I believe in tradition. The problem is this. If you embrace tradition more than you embrace Jesus, then you become traditional. And if you stay traditional, it becomes a mindset that leads, don't miss it, to traditionalism, where you actually worship the tradition more than you worship Jesus. I lost all of you. I got one man clapping. I don't know if he can even hear what I'm saying, but he started clapping. <laughs> hear me. You cannot worship tradition more than you worship Jesus. And there, oh, thank you, Lord. Mark chapter 6, the Bible talks about a group of people who made their man-made traditions greater than the commandments. Hear me closely. You better be careful to discern the difference between a man-made tradition and a commandment from God. Because some men will turn man-made tradition into God's commandment, and that is not how the kingdom operates. You come in here, see these screens? People already, well, they got them screens. They got all them screens. And the smoke, if they had the glory, they wouldn't need no smoke. Be quiet. All these lights, all these lights, as if heaven is going to look like a home interior house with pink walls and mauve carpet and a blue couch on the side with a home interior painting. And a ceiling fan with a dove painted in the baptistry. Heaven is going to have peals of thunder, rolls of lightning. Oh, y'all better, I better go sit down because I feel something here. You have never seen a light show until you get to heaven. And when you look at Jesus, he will not be tied to a whipping post. And he won't be some little beat up old man. The Bible said he has feet like brass, eyes like fire. Voice like the sound of many water. I feel him in the room. I feel him in the room. How many want to see Jesus? And so this house says, whatever it looks like, whatever it sounds like, come Lord Jesus. I want my children to be hungry for God. I want your grandchildren to be hungry for God. Well, we never done it that way before. And there's whole generations missing in the church because of it. And because we fell in love with our tradition more than we did Jesus, we ran off a whole generation of sons and daughters because we said this in the church. If we can't clone you, we disown you. If we can't clone you, we disown you. If we can't make you look, look just like us, sing just like us, act just like us. Oh, Lord, I'm going to preach right here. I feel like I'm hitting a stump, and I'm going to come back and hit that thing one more time. Because this house will never be so married to tradition that we run off and leave a generation trying to maintain a monument that is dead. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive forevermore. And we got people who protect their tradition. I tell you, I was traditional. I was as churchy as Noah was Arky. And in 2014, just about this time of the year too, the Sunday before the Super Bowl in 2014, I had an encounter. I'm going to tell you this. A man with an encounter is never at the mercy of a man with an argument. And I'm preaching on, in the middle of the Chattanooga campus on a Sunday morning just like this. And out of my right ear... I heard the Spirit of God say to me two words that changed my life. He said, watch this. I'm in the middle of preaching just like I'm preaching to y'all, sweating, hollering, spitting everywhere. And I heard the Lord say right up in that area, watch this. And I stopped preaching and I said, watch what? And a week later, a 90-day revival hit our church. I saw six blind people get healed in 90 days. We baptized over 1,100 people in water in 90 days. I saw miracles happen in the marketplace, in restaurants. I saw, I saw a boy with a, a disease that the doctors told him he wouldn't live to be 10. He's, what is he? He's 20 years old today. He's fixing to get married. Ethan is still alive and Jesus is still Lord. I'm telling you, I've seen this, this, this. I've been deeper. I know what it's like to be in the shallow, but I'm telling you, I know what it's like for him to take you deeper than you've ever been before. He'll turn you upside down.